Brendam Docks is one of the busiest dockyards on all the island of Sodor. It's where ships and engines and cranes alike are busy day and night, every day of the year. But poor Cranky the Crane never gets a nap. He never gets to sleep early. He works all the time. And his only company are the gulls that settle on his arm. So Cranky is always cranky. Ahoy there, Cranky, cried Salty. Where have you been? snapped Cranky. And a good day to you too, Captain. Bill and Ben arrive for work, full of mischief. Hurry up, barked Cranky. I haven't got all day. You're no fun, grumbled Bill. You wouldn't be fun if you were stuck up here, snapped Cranky. So that's why you're cranky, said Bill. You're lonely, said Ben. I'm not, Cranky cranked. So it's company you be needing, said Salty. Reminds me of a lonely old Grand Banks lighthouse keeper. Not another one of your stories, cried Cranky. Oh, please, Salty, they chimed. We haven't heard it. "'Twas in the middle of a wee naughty storm," Salty began, "'the likes of which you see once in a lifetime." This made Cranky very cranky, so cranky that he swung his arm around. And dropped the pipes onto the tracks instead of the trucks. Whoops! said Cranky, meekly. You've blown the main now, matey, said Salty. The engines were trapped. You're going to get into trouble, sang Bill and Ben. The fat controller was in his office being measured for a new waistcoat. When he heard the news, he left immediately for the docks. The fat controller knew that any delay at the docks could cause confusion. You have made a terrible mess. Cranky, he said sternly. I'm sorry, sir, Cranky whispered. You engines will have to stay here tonight until Harvey clears up this mess in the morning. Cranky's heart sank as Salty uttered those fateful words. That reminds me of a story. It was a bitter cold winter. The brave little ship was stuck until the ice melted the next spring. Barely made it round the Cape. After a hundred scary days at sea without a scratch, he sailed into port and crashed his bow not 15 feet from my buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt. Set my ears, wailed Cranky. Salty spent all night telling tales of powerful storms, daring rescues, and brave little ships. And when the sun rose, he was still talking and talking and talking. I can't take any more, groaned Cranky. <whistles> Harvey the crane engine arrived. The fat controller sent me to help clear away this mess, he puffed proudly. Cranky was so pleased the engines would be going soon, he forgot to be cranky. I'll never misbehave again, he promised, as long as I don't have to listen to any more of Salty's stories. And after Harvey and the workmen had cleared the wreckage, Cranky worked hard all day. He carefully loaded the trucks, helped speed the engines on their way, and he said please and thank you. This is new, puffed Thomas, but he had spoken too soon. Cranky couldn't help himself. It was nice while it lasted, said Percy, and all the engines laughed. But Cranky was still cranky.